So something slightly different today. We've got a little review video. Uh, I've had this sent, about a few of them sent by this factory that wants us to review uh, these microscopes. I don't normally do reviews, but this one seems like it's definitely something of interest to my audience. So it's called the Tomlov 10.1 inch LCD digital microscope. And we will take a look at if this is any good, basically. It's got part number DM202SE. I'll leave a link to purchase this in the video. It's an affiliate link, so if you buy it, we get a little bit of money towards the channel. That helps us keep going. But you're welcome to buy it wherever you like. It's mainly just a review video to see if this is useful for you guys. I always like to try and find good products that are cheap, so you guys can do repairs uh, under your budget. So it's got a nice manual there. It also has built-in LED lights, which will be required for microscope comes with a US adapter, I believe, which obviously I'm in the UK, so I'll just use an adapter on top of that. I think it's USB-C powered anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Cleaning cloth, We've got a stand. We have the USB-C cables underneath, a remote control, and the main monitor, the 10 inch monitor. So it looks like you pretty much just place it all together and put a few screws in. So I won't bore you with that step. Let's just go and build this up. So this is the unit all assembled. It only took a few minutes. And you can see it's pretty simple. You've got the base with this arm attached. You screw the monitor onto here so it slides up and down. You screw these into the base. And that's literally all there is. On the back, we've got USB-C power, a micro SD card for, I presume, taking photos and a five volt out that goes down to the light down here to power these LEDs potentially. I think they are battery powered in the base already, so that's probably just to recharge them. So if we just plug this in the back of the monitor, and you can see that it boots up straight away. That was pretty much an instant boot. And there's the monitor. Let's just grab something straight away. Got say a Game Boy, Pocket board here, I think it is. Yep, Game Boy Pocket. Place that under. And there's obviously no auto-focusing by the looks of this. So is it just a manual? You can, I guess, focus with the up and down. And then, ah, that's your focus. So this moves a little bit, so I probably want to tighten that up more than I did. There we go. So that's your focus wheel. That works pretty well. And then the up and down is like your typical microscope. It's a, a crude zoom level, I guess. So the further up you are, the further away you are. And I'd say that is a pretty workable distance. But just for the camera's sake, let's just bring this down so you can at least see everything in the camera. And that image is nice and sharp. And this is with no extra light yet. So I think there's a wheel at the back. There we go, and that turns the LEDs on and off. And you can see I don't have any cable in the back yet, so it's not charging the LEDs. And this screen is auto-adjusting for whether you have lights or not. So it's got like an auto-adjust for your brightness. So you can see there, it's got a slight wobble to the screen, like a, a visual... Um, hard to explain, but look at this straight line. And when you move it left and right, see how the chip kind of bends left and right. So it's got a little bit of a delay. Let's have a quick go at soldering because the main problem I find with digital microscopes, and that's why I always use optical, is you lose your perception, your 3D perception, because you have one eye, effectively one screen, so it's not 3D. So one of the issues with using this to do work on is the lack of depth perception. Uh, the second issue you'll find is if the screen has any kind of lag. So the difference between me moving my physical iron in to do the work and the screen showing what I'm doing, if you have, I think it's around 20 milliamps or more delay, you will find that your brain gets very confused at trying to do the actual rework because what you're seeing on screen here is very different than what your hand movements are doing. So in order to be of any use in my eyes for rework, um, you have to have a very low input lag. And I mean, it's better than nothing if you don't have a scope. It's still better to have a scope to see. 
uh, even if you then use your eyes to look down at the workpiece instead of the screen and you use the screen just to inspect your work. I will say the image is nice and sharp though. You've definitely got a clear image on screen, that's for sure. If I try and solve to say this piece. And I can manage that. I'm sure there is a delay. Well, let's try another piece. Let's try some cap. Yeah, so it's usable. There is definitely a slight delay, however. Um, it's very marginal. I think the main issue is just the lack of depth perception. So it is a little bit awkward to work around. Let's move these lights out of the way and let it just auto calibrate. So this is without those assistive LEDs. And again, the screen's perfectly usable. You don't need those LEDs. This is not a heavily lit room. I know it's a studio I record in, but it's not heavily lit. I'd say this is an average working environment and I can see the screen perfectly fine. So the LEDs, although beneficial, they just get in my way personally. So let's have a go at this. Purposely just applying too much solder and no flux just to see uh, if I was trying to be careful, then can I be, which I can. So that's kind of showing that there isn't much lag there and it's actually usable. And now let's just reflow those pins properly. Some flux. So that's no mither at all. Let's just see what the maximum working depth of this camera is. So it goes right the way up. So it's well out your way for working. And still a sharp image. So yeah, I'd probably use it higher up than I am at the moment so you have more work area. And I'd say you'd probably use it about there, which is Workspace wise, I am about six inches away from the Game Boy at that height. And that makes your area much easier to work on. So I can see you actually being able to fit everything on this board no problem. So you can see there's a Game Boy, fits on no problem. Game Boy Color, fits on no mither, and the center is here. So obviously you've got to get your work point in the center where you need to work on. Get a Game Gear, probably one of the biggest handhelds you'll use. And that fits on, and you can work around. So you can see that's the issue you'd have if you wanted to, uh, say, work on a certain area in the center of the board, like, say, here, you were trying to do some repair. But obviously, you can just turn it this way around and work here. So it forces you to work in a certain orientation, potentially. Um, but if you wanted to work on this board, you can fit everything in the center line here. You can sort of fit the whole console in that area, even if you just rotate it around. So the only time you're going to struggle with this is if this bar gets in the way of a, a large um, item, which I don't think it will. The mechanism for moving up and down is, although it's a bit wobbly, you know, it's like thing moves around a bit. It's not bad. It feels nice. It goes up and down accurately. And it goes down. I believe you can lock that in. So now it doesn't move. So if you don't want this moving up and down freely, you can just lock it with this locking nut. That USB just flaps around and moves out. So I guess if you're going all the way up, you know, past this point, and that USB comes over, and then you go down, you might put a little bit of pressure on here, but I don't think that's a major issue. And I haven't seen it actually cause an issue. And let's take a look at the menu. So we have a... Remote control with a battery pre-installed. Says double click OK for menu, power off long press. So double click and we get the menu. It's quite bright that menu. It is literally what you see on screen. It's a pretty bright uh, screen. Got shooting methods. Let's have a look. Single shot, two second timer, five seconds. So that will be for taking a screenshot onto a micro SD card, which is pretty cool. So you can actually um, output that. I'll do that now. So let's just say get this in focus here and let's try taking a snapshot. Now I don't know how to do that. 
long press menu button to switch to photo mode, but then the manual. So the manual says the manual says to long press the menu button to enter photo mode, but shows you pressing the OK button. So I'm going to just long press OK instead. And that did nothing. Let's long press menu. So it says long press menu. You can see it's done like a photo there. Let's just do a few more and then I can put these up on screen for you after so you can see what the quality of these captures is like. Let's do that there. The only thing there as well I'd say is you can't do, I'm guessing, off the remote, long pressing menu because you have to double tap OK. And if you long press OK, it powers off. So it'd be a nice way to be able to take photos with this. I mean, we can try. We can try pressing different buttons or um, triple pressing maybe. No, but just get you into menu. Yeah, so I think that's the only way, if that is taking photos. The reason I say that is because when you're doing this, pushing on the menu, you're slightly pushing. So if you're going to long press this, just make sure you hold firmly so the camera isn't shaking when it takes a photo. Let's just do it once more to make sure we... Ah, yeah, no, it didn't take a photo. So I don't think the remote can do photos. So the resolution is 16 meg. Uh, continuous shooting's off. Image quality is set to high already, so that's not going to happen. Sharpness, let's set sharpness to strong because maybe that's what the screen shows. Anti shake is, let's put that on. And let's see, line assess we don't need, full light we don't need, screen protector, light source frequency. Okay, so that's everything on there ready. This is nicely in focus there. And that's now taken an image. And I don't know how I got to the viewing of the image, to be honest. So OK and stop starts the menu. Let's do a video as well. And I guess I can play back this video. So there's the amp, the RAM, the CPU. Let's see what that's like. So you can actually play back the video yourself on the screen as well, which is cool. So this isn't me moving the board. This is the video we just recorded. So that's pretty cool because you could play back the video while you sat at the desk in case you wanted to go back and look at what you did in case you removed a component. So that's quite a cool feature. I'm not 100% sure on the menu getting in and out, but in fairness, I haven't read the manual. So it's not super intuitive straight away. I mean, like you can press menu to get into menu. But like now, I am in picture display mode. I don't know how I got there, but I know holding that gets out. So now we're back to live view. But how I got to play back the video, I'm not sure. I think all you do is, well, the only way I found out is just to hold the menu to get in and then just press left and right. Or maybe I should just read the manual. You can also zoom in and out with the left and right button. So you just hold down the right button to zoom in. And this will be a digital zoom. And then hold right to... Uh, left to zoom out, sorry. So you've got a digital zoom as well as uh, the optical movement up and down. So again, that's quite cool. I don't see any degradation in the image quality. So zooming in to what looks like probably two times optical, maybe. Still got a very clear image there, completely usable. A little bit slow going in and out doing this, but again, nice feature and that works good. So if we read about how you're meant to take a photo, it says you hold this for three seconds to switch between video and photo mode, and you press OK to take a video. So that's taking a video. You hold for three seconds to go between video playback, photo, I presume. So that now takes a photo. Yep. And then hold menu. So menu switches between live view, which is this, which I guess is symbolized by the icon up there. Then picture, which is obviously then the ability to scroll through or playback in this sense. And then that's photo mode. So the camera with the plus is to take photos with the OK button like that. And you get a little yellow camera and that turns red. Hold again. That is now, I presume, live playback. I'm pressing OK, starts a video recording. And pressing it again gets into playback mode. So yeah, just when you read the manual, it's actually pretty simple once you've read it. 
So holding the menu toggles between the three modes, playback, video plus live camera, or just snapshot photos. So that's pretty simple. The USB that goes in the back does charge the batteries and it says it takes two to three hours to charge these um, extra LEDs that are attached. And then they last for however long they last, probably last a good few hours. So there's one more feature this camera has and it mentions it works as a webcam on both PC and Mac. So you can see we've plugged it into the PC. I've just basically taken the USB and plugged it straight into the PC. You got memory, which I guess if we press okay on that, or I guess if it's just left there, Maybe it doesn't seem to. Ah, yeah, there you go. Press OK. It now shows up on the PC as a disk drive that you can tap and just open these images up. So these are the images we took. So this is literally live out of the microscope, which is really cool. You don't have to disconnect the micro SD card or mess around. You just simply plug this into your PC. That's the video that is static. Let's try and find the video that was actually a video. You can see on the screen it's a lot darker than it appeared on uh, the actual LCD, but that's nothing that you can't live with and you can certainly brighten it up in post-processing. And you can see that video is, is pretty good. I think that's high enough quality. So that's really useful. So now let's disconnect it as a um, memory card, which I'm just gonna try. And now on this, let's select PC camera. And if we just open the camera app on the PC, it does literally show up. So if we put that underneath, that now shows up. So I guess that means you could have this connected to your PC if you're doing live streams or repairs. And this is a really good way of having a, a microscope that can record as well. So this could go straight to OBS and record videos for you. So that again is a really good feature. Another thing I've just totally overlooked in between moving this from the PC to the desk is it's completely battery powered. So I thought that was just for the LEDs. So this is now portable. This is no, uh, no power plugged in, completely portable and fully running. So this will have a battery and I'm guessing, pretty obviously it must do. And this is running completely power free. So you can have this as a portable microscope, just turn it on, move it around, plug it in, and move it out of the way. So I am actually quite impressed with this. It's a good microscope. The quality of it, in terms of USB microscopes and digital microscopes that aren't optical, it's pretty much up there with the best I've seen. I don't tend to use them as I've said though, just simply due to the depth perception thing where there's no depth perception between when you're working here and looking there. You've got no 3D sense of depth. So you'll find you tend to have your soldering iron, like if I grab the soldering iron and I'm looking at the screen, when I'm doing this now, in my eyes, I can't tell that the soldering iron is way above, like I'm literally, you know, an inch above the board. But on here, so if we look there, you can see the tip there is an inch above the board. There's half an inch, there's quarter of an inch there's still not touching the board and there's touching the board. So in terms of like up and down movement where your perception of where you need to be in terms of soldering, like you need to solder this pin, I just personally tend to find I'll kind of float above like this and I'm, I'm not even on the chip. That's my only um, issue with digital microscopes. But there's also many benefits to the digital microscopes. You can record video, you can take photos, you can catch them on capture cards. The cheaper than optical microscopes there's many benefits to them so as i mentioned this is not a paid video i simply got a few of these sent to me to review and i only did it because i feel like this is also beneficial to you guys the price changes all the time so do check the affiliate link i've left in this video and if you want to support the channel and you do want one of these please do buy through that link and i'll just get a small amount of that payment that will entirely go back into this channel to help with production and making more videos so for those of you that want a cheap solution to a microscope that's cheaper than optical, I would 100% recommend these. I might even stock them depending on if you guys do like them and you mentioned that you buy them and you'd prefer to just buy direct for quick shipping. So instead of buying, say, from China and waiting, you could buy direct from us for next day delivery. Do leave a comment and let us know and I could stock these locally as well for our UK and international customers that want quicker delivery times. So hopefully you guys found this useful and I'll catch you in the next one.